Cube at Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible and Actian accelerating Big Data 2.0. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is Big Data Silicon Valley, hashtag Big Data SV. It's a continuation of our in-depth coverage of the big data landscape. We were just in Big Data NYC just a few months ago. Now we're in Silicon Valley, uh, where all the innovations happening. And this is the Cube, the crowdsource innovation, streaming the data live. This is what we do: extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And we have a very special guest uh, in the house here in the Cube. Cube alumni, Cos from Wen Disco. Welcome back again. Always a pleasure to have you. One, it's a, a dynamic dynamic conversation, great personality, and you know what you're talking about. So, and you don't hold back, so we love, we love it. So, welcome back. It's it's a lot to, to carry on. Thank, thank you, John. <laughs> yeah. You are a tech athlete, and you're not afraid to throw a few punches, uh, and, and which is we love the controversy. So, but let's get down to it. So, um, what's changed since New York City? Obviously, New York City, very financial services oriented, very much business, a lot of tech being discussed, Silicon Valley, growth, growth is happening. Valuations are high, a lot of things happening in the marketplace. What is your view of Silicon Valley, big data, the Strata Conference? What is happening here? What is the core story? Um, I think what, what is going on is that the, the big data is being caught on more and more uh, radars, I would say, of the big, big companies, right? So big enterprises. And as always with any new technology or the set of the technologies, there's a bunch of hype, there's a bunch of nonsense and noise, but there's, there's you know, a certain amount of real, real deal in it, right? And uh, among these uh, companies that that actually bring the, the, the real deal on the table uh, are companies that uh, stand behind behind the, the open source movement, essentially the, the Hadoop and age-based technologies, and of course uh, uh, real-time processing such as you know, uh, or close to real-time processing such as Spark and Shark. And we see the huge um, momentum gain, essentially, um, in, in these companies. As you know, Databricks actually got the funding uh, recently, so it shows that uh, the investment community has a, a, a belief that this segment of the market will go up and will keep growing. And uh, Cloudera is actually um, took Spark under their wing, so that's uh, officially supported platform for them as well. But what's interesting is that all these analytical, uh, new analytical tool sets, toolkits, they still, I believe, struggle to reach the level of uh, real-time um, responsiveness of age base, for instance, which has been around for a while. And the brilliant community that works actually behind of it uh, made it real kind of it's pretty much the, 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 the part or moving cog of any data warehouse for anyone who needs a fast access to, to data, right? So uh, each base is there, each base is growing, you know, at, at the fast pace, and we see actually quite a bit of the momentum again from the customers and the like uh, who are asking about each base solutions. And again, we be in the company that did the non-stop Hadoop um, last year, actually, interesting, yeah, about a year ago, um, that time we uh, announced non-stop HDFS, and uh, now we brought to the table the next offering, uh, which is non-stop HBase, because we see actually quite a bit of the momentum gain. So how's the, how's the non-stop working right now? I mean, it's obviously not stopping. You continue to roll out more and more features HBase. Uh, is it well received by customers from a technical standpoint? Are there specific proof points you can now point to and say, hey, these are the use cases that we're exploding uh, in a big way, and here's some new things around the corner that we're attacking? Actually, as you know, the, the original non-stop HDFS comes in two different flavors, right? It comes for uh, data center, such, such, such called LAN um, edition, and uh, for cross data center uh, application, which is called VAN edition. And what we see um, mostly in, in terms of interest from the companies is that VAN edition is significantly um, higher demanded, so people people actually need to have a way to 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 solve the disaster and recovery problem between the data centers. Uh, considering especially the fact that uh, traditional ways of doing this is actually uh, very costly and have limited limited capabilities, both in the range and, and the, the data uh, data volumes. So non-stop van is actually being received very well. So we're going into the number of the high-profile POCs, and uh, it's actually it's actually catching up pretty good. So HBase is, is interesting. I mean, obviously, it's 
got a lot of momentum in the marketplace. It's kind of the de facto standard in, in Hadoop. Uh, but there's a lot of complaints about HBase. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard, you know, so there's a lot of heavy lifting involved, and it's not nonstop. So um, you're addressing the latter of those two complaints. Are you concerned about, uh, you, first of all, do you think that's valid, what I'm saying? I mean, you hear complaints from, from maybe not so much developers, but people that are paying developers. The operational <laughs> you know? guys right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that a concern of yours? And is the market addressing that? And, and so I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So. As apparently many of the listeners might might know already, so HBase has redundant failover capabilities built in, right? So basically, HBase contains of two main parts, where the uh, the administrative piece of the HBase called master uh, manages the information about the essentially regional servers that that tracks the metadata about data placements and you know table spreads and what what was not. So. Uh, the redundant failover capability in, or sorry, redundant, I shouldn't say redundant, uh, a certain failover capabilities of, of which base, I actually focused on um, regional servers. So there's a way to fail over regional server um, if, if the, the active regional server failed. But the problem, as usual, in, in any distributed systems is that you can, if you're lucky, right, so failover could happen very quickly. If you not so lucky, the failover can take actually a few hours, right? And that means uh, service interruption essentially, right? Another part of the problem essentially is that HBase client is not HA capable, unlike HDFS client. So in, a, in HDFS two, for instance, client can fail over quickly because there is a notion of a proxy provider that helps you essentially bounce from from one node to, to the standby node. And we took advantage of that in our implementation back in, in, in HDFS. So HBase doesn't have such capabilities, so client is actually not aware about the possible multiplicity of the, of the region servers. So essentially, the, the problem here is that you have a bunch of clients writing at high speed the data into the region servers, okay? The region servers, uh, essentially the, the HBase tables. And uh, a couple of things could happen. So if region server goes down, the, the, the HA capability, the failover capability that HBase actually has right now can help you to uh, essentially re-register the region server on a different server, on a different host, and hopefully everything will go okay after that, but the clients will fail essentially the transmission because they have no way of switching over quickly, right? Um, so what we're trying to solve in, in, in the offering that, that has been uh, announced yesterday is essentially this part, right? So uh, we're trying to solve the failover or make make multiple active region servers uh, available similarly to what we've done for, for HDFS. So you say the problem is that the recovery is very variable and unpredictable for, for clients today with a pre-win disk. Operational complexity is well there, right? I mean, if you ah. recall our organization from, from last year, yeah. we mentioned that the operational manual for QGM with Zookeeper is whatever, 40 pages, 24 pages, I don't remember the number, but it's sort of like complex and huge. So HBase, as I said, is even more hardcore and even more um, um, sophisticated. So operational headache <laughs> is actually bigger. Yeah, so the big chunk of that operational headache that I was referring to in my question relates to recovery and the whole failover procedures. And so you're right. dealing with that sort of out of the box, is that right? We, we, yeah, we essentially give, give, give the clients an ability to run multiple um, region servers, right? And they all active, they can serve clients actually at the same time um, without any, any essentially overhead, pretty much without any overhead. I mean, there is some, some overhead on rights because we need to reach the consensus and all that stuff. But uh, it is actually would benefit from the multiple multiple uh, region server architecture because uh, natural load balance will help will help actually to bring up the uh, the speed. So, Kaz, what kind of apps, use cases, you know, examples do you see your solution being, you know, most popular in? Where do you see expect the uptake to be? Um, it's sort of an interesting an interesting question. I'd say, I'd say. Again, my guess is as good as any, right? So because it's probably we, better than most. But well, anyway, no, no, no. <laughs> it's better than John and Dave's. <laughs> we bought it. Yeah. <laughs> but I think what's going on essentially is uh, most of the uh, real-time or close to real-time oriented applications would benefit tremendously from this, because for these guys, even you know, at ten 
20, 30 seconds of downtime might mean, you know, huge, huge loss of data, right? So that, that would be my guess. Uh, apparently for everybody, anybody who is using HBase in production, uh, for instance, a good example would be eBay search, right? So, I mean, they're using HBase to, to power up the, 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 the search engine, right? So imagine HBase goes down, right, in, in eBay. So, and I know for a fact that eBay, for instance, has a pretty sophisticated harness around their HBase setup in order to provide that failover capability, you know, as, as quickly as possible. So I'd say guys like this would be would be actually very okay. So um, so so you mentioned search, and that's sort of an e-commerce play. Uh, I would think ad serving maybe is that right? Uh, maybe I fraud I'm detection. Not, I'm not an ad an ad guy at all, yeah. but I would. But you would uh, think. I mean, the yeah. H base is being used. I would think in certain situations there. Yeah, maybe maybe not. Right. I mean, I, I, I mean, you see some other new databases emerging, but 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 still true. Um, true. I. Yeah, they're, 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 every single day there is a new new technology coming around, right? Yeah. And, and this this year, Ostrata, I, I found actually probably another twenty percent of the companies I never heard about, right? I mean, twenty percent more compared to the last year. I mean, they might be here for the for the for the whole next year, or might be not. They might develop something that will catch up on the market. So we don't know. But what I'm saying is that there's always competition. We heard that yesterday from the CEO John Schroeder at MapR. He's like, I walked through the hall, I saw companies I'd never heard of before. There we go. And half of them won't even be around. <laughs> well, that was my comment. Um, you know, it's like you know, look to your left, look to your right. They may not be there. It's kind of like that when you go to school. But I got to ask you more importantly. We heard some great quotes. I remember the first H base con. We covered the cube with, with Cloudera when they launched that. The quote that I liked there was, HBase is like a fine tailored suit. Suit it up, it's perfect. So if you want to try to put on somebody else, it's really difficult, which kind of points to the use case of, of what HBase did at the time. The quote we just heard from uh, the CEO, ex-Microsoft guy we just on was, it's like a big bodybuilder, big built up muscles and thin legs, <laughs> professional <laughs> services, and you have skinny legs on Hadoop, yeah. uh, or HBase in this case. So, What's your take on that? Because what you're seeing, HBase is a very viable product. It's growing fast. Is it expanding its use case? What are people doing with it? What are some of the, the trends around HBase that you can share with the folks, both technically and just from a relevant standpoint? Is it evolving faster than you expected, slower than you expected? Is the ecosystem, the contributors growing? What's your take on, on HBase? Give the update. I think I think HBase, and again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a, you know, a commuter to each base or whatever, so um, I cannot tell for the community. Uh, but what I observe from the outside is essentially I see community being very focused on bringing the the stable API complete version of each base into the game. Right. So, for instance, right now there is a very active work on the um, point ninety six um, line of the release of H base, which would, they, they called the singularity release, which would be last incompatible sort of release. I mean, it's a huge jump. Everything's going to break. Everything's going to be incompatible. But after that, they they promise to be stable and sit sit actually at the same at the same spot forever. So community is actually very busy working with that, and uh, uh, it's it's great to see that you know there is no stagnance, there is no you know slowdowns. People full of ideas, people full of you know, creativity essentially, and, and they're actually moving forward very fast. And uh, with the stability release in place, I think this this fast full, fast fast move forward would be actually uh, oriented on better performance, on better usability, on better operational procedures, and, and that kind of stuff. But as with any open source product, essentially. There is always this last mile between the open source release and the customer, right? So somebody needs to actually cover this gap. So system integrators actually need to need to step in and make it actually usable for everybody out out, out of the box, essentially. Because as we you know referred a couple of times before, operational complexity is what killing a lot of these uh, mm. software offerings, in my opinion. So, so I want to ask you, Kaz, um, we were talking before about uh, you know, 20 percent of the companies at the show floor you hadn't heard of, and presumably they're new startups that you mm -hmm. hadn't heard of. Um, you have been in the inner sort of technical circle of Hadoop you know, since the beginning. Um, and some of the other companies that you see on the strata floor are ones that maybe weren't here at the beginning either. You know, you see EMC, you know, you right. see a lot of the big whales Microsoft. coming in to the community, right? Yeah. Um, and <laughs> So you see them, you know, trying to co-opt the big data theme and doing a great job of marketing. Well, my question, specific question is, what's their contribution to the core of the technical community? Are there certain companies that are stepping up and, and bringing sort of, you know, their capabilities to open source? 
Uh, is it mostly pure marketing? What do you see there, and what's the community's response to these big companies coming in? It's positive in one hand. Are they delivering the kind of contributions that you guys would like to see? Well, I, I, like, I, I, I sort of want to compare, and, and I'm not the first one actually to do this, so, but uh, I want to compare open source development with sort of evolutional process, right? I mean, nobody, nobody drives it to, to a particular goal, right? So we sort of trying to approach thousands of different ways and see what works better and what sticks, right? So it's like throw something on the wall and see if it falls or not, right? And uh, with big companies coming in, they, they apparently they have certain agenda, they, they want to achieve certain, certain results, performance-wise, feature-wise, that stuff. And uh, I think open source community is actually thrilled to see this because more people uh, will contribute to the product, the better product, the, 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 the better use cases, user base will get out of it. Um, Marketing-wise, as you said, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of hype here and there, right? So some, some companies just want to sort of ride this wave and just, okay, so we are big data guys because we said so, sort of, right? Uh, in terms of contributions, the, 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 the regional, I would say, core teams that were actually focused on Hadoop and HBase and, and what so on, they're still around, they're still very actively working. And uh, they, I'd say, sitting probably in three, four, five mostly companies around the Silicon Valley, right? So uh, people, people, I believe what happens is that the, the companies where the most of the open source contributors are with, they manage to create this this climate of the engineering creativity cultural kind of paradise, if you will, right? So where people can actually can actually contribute most effectively. Uh, I I don't know if the big companies can do this. And again, I've been working for big companies in my life, such as Sun Microsystems, for instance. Rest in peace. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think I think that Silicon Valley startup spirit should be there, right? I mean, you have to innovate, and, and for innovation, you actually have to collaborate very quickly. You need to actually bounce the ideas with your colleagues and with your peers and with people in other companies and all this stuff. And I think, actually, at Vandiska, the, the, the one of the reasons, again, self-plug, but the, the, the one of the reasons I like the company is that we always bounce in, bounce in the ideas um, with each other. We always sort of trying to help. Remember the cloud era back in the day when you guys were sitting on the floor there? Yeah. At, yeah. At, yeah. Something similar. So I don't know if that spirit was in the cloud. There Remember the old days, Cloud Air, where the early days we were there, having I mean, like that, less than 30 people. Yeah, I mean, It was exactly. a very small company. But, and but Sun's a good example. I mean, Sun always had a, an open culture, open source culture, and, and I mean, even though Linux became Sun's snake oil right. in a way. But, um, <laughs> but, but are, there, are there large companies in particular that uh, stand out? I mean, for example, John and I always talk about IBM's open source mojo. Um, and I don't want to put you on the spot, but is you know is that illusory? Is that real? Are th are there or are, are the big companies sort of you know all together in this? Or are there are there some that really stand out? I think I think again th th there's each company has an agenda in there, right? So for instance, if you take a look at Intel, right? So I know that Intel is very uh, active in Spark community, for instance, yeah. right? So if you look at, at Pivotal, Pivotal seems to be very active actually in Groovy, Spring Source, that, that, that sort of the communities. Mm -hmm. And now they're ramping up their, their contribution into Big Top and, and Hadoop and what's not, right? Uh, I don't think you actually can, can paint them all in one brush, if, if I understand the question correctly. Yeah, yeah, so you're saying it's they align with their agenda. And, right, so and for instance, Microsoft is, is very interested in, in bringing the Microsoft bits and pieces into the Hadoop, right? And I'm not sure if they do this in a good faith or not. Again, not my, my call. Uh, you kind of got to trust that they do and hope that they do, right? Right. What else can yeah, you? I fool me once. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So anyway, um, but uh, <laughs> so every, <laughs> yeah, the more the merrier, anyway. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave, it. We'll leave that alone. <laughs> well, Kaz, great to have you on theCUBE. Great to, great to hear from you. Give us the final word on, on what's happening here this year at Strata Conference and Big Data SV. What's the big aha revelation from your standpoint? I think what I, what I really thrilled to see is as we just discussed, a lot of a lot of big companies are there on the floor, and they actually, literally, they're trying to start providing the services services around big data. It might be Cassandra, it might be NoSQL, Mongo, HDFS, Hadoop, wherever, but they actually getting on that bandwagon. 
which means that customers would have more choices, customers would have more to pick from, more competition, more fierce competition actually will find the best solutions on the market. So I mean, I, I like the momentum, I like the speed with, with which the market is actually moving forward. And there could be different explanations for that, but, but still, um, I believe we will, we will essentially at the end of the day, we will gain from, from, that, from that highly high speed craze, if I, if I can put it this way, <laughs> where, where you get actually everybody's on, on board, like every day, every day new, new names popping up. So. Yeah, and the marketing dollars too. You know, so if oh, yeah. the big companies want to do market development for you know, the little guys, uh, all for it. And then the little guys how to compete on the capabilities that they bring and the differentiation and, their, and, 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 and solving problems that the big guys don't. So. Yep. Okay, this is theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest here live in Silicon Valley. This is Big Data SV. The hashtag is hashtag Big Data SV. Go to crowdchat.net slash Big Data SV and join the conversation. We're posting photos there. Uh, you can post videos, you can post photos, you can post commentary, and uh, it automatically loads the hashtag. So join us and ask us anything. We'll be happy to answer your questions. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break.